quiet, I wouldn't say. No, I think they like tiptoe. I, I don't. I don't think they do. I, I think, think so. I think they lumber. They have big paws that like absorb all the noise in the grass. I don't think that's how it works. But you also contend that loud animals are penguins and lions. Yeah, lions are loud. Louder than a bear? Yeah, I think so. In in which way? I think they roar more. Than I think they do. they are both known for their roars. Oh, so you think they're equally loud? Yeah, and I think uh, in movement, a lion is quieter than a bear because a bear lumbers and a lion's like a cat. Cats are loud. When they walk? No, just like being around. They like are... very meowy and loud. Well, you've... Uh, Grumpy. <laughs> also, never been around cats. <laughs> and the cats you've been around are very quiet. You also <laughs> were bringing things up from before. You also said a cat landing is as loud as you landing. Yeah. And you said they have, quote, stompy paws. Yeah, they have stompy paws. No, <laughs> well, cats are, it's it's literally a saying. No, they have little stompy paws. Cat burglar. Little stompy not, paws. Not a bear burglar. Bear burglars would be like coming in and smashing up the place. Cat burglars, quiet. Stompy little meowy jerks. <laughs> they're, they're not. You just hate cats. And I'm tired of your anti-cat bias coming into this podcast. <laughs> we are a pro-cat podcast and we will always be a pro-cat boss podcast. Okay. You heard it here, folks. We at I Love This, you should too, are pro-cat. <laughs> right, Samantha? Sure. And we're getting three cats. Nope. Sure, Indy sounds great. No, nope, we you are not. It. And if you can't tell already, this is another episode of uh, Meandering Nonsense from us at I Love This, You Should Too, a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, which is locally grown and community supported. And if this is your first uh, time tuning in, we only meander mostly in the first three, four minutes. Yes. Then we're laser focused after Just this. Just total focus and on point and really like going for it in a very topical way. Yeah. And uh, that is my co-host, Samantha Stompy Paws Ease, and I am Indy B-Fab Randawa. B-Fab. So today we are going to be talking about Samantha's pick, which was Step Up 3, D. Yes, and um, we were sad to realize when we went to watch it on Disney Plus that uh, you can't watch it in 3D on a television. No, you can get a 3D Blu-ray and watch it on your 3D TV. But we don't have a 3D TV because no. I mostly hate 3D movies. Yeah, 3D movies make me really dizzy, so... They rarely add anything. Yeah, and so I just like don't care. But I can see some good 3D things in this, and I'm sure we'll we'll talk about it. But before we get into everything, let's thank our first sponsor of the episode, and that is the Edmonton Community Foundation. The ECF acts as a bridge between donors and charities to create a strong, vibrant community for generations to come. And you can start an endowment fund yourself or with a group, and once it reaches $10,000, it can start distributing funds. Vital Signs is an annual checkup conducted by the Edmonton Community Foundation in partnership with the Edmonton Social Planning Council to measure how the community is doing, and this year's focus is making ends meet here in Edmonton. So if you want to learn more about what they are all about, or if you want to start one of these endowment funds yourself, you can learn more at ecfoundation.org. Okay, well, we are talking about Step Up 3D with no D, unfortunately. But Step Up 3, which continues our journey in the Step Up series. Did you uh, love it, Indy? I think what I had said earlier about one of the other Step Up movies really applies here. Mm. That this movie is as dumb as it is enjoyable. Fair. And the dumber it gets, the more enjoyable it gets. It was super fun to watch. Most of it, yes. Yeah. I think it does kind of fall into some of the pitfalls of the other movies. And just like generic movies in general, mm. like not well-written movies all kind of do the same few things. This does it as well. I wish it would just lean more into being as uh, stupid of a dance movie as it could be. True. I think they may have been limited, though, because the past Step Up movies had made so much money that they were like, no, we got to make another hit. Well, yeah, I think you do that. And people are going to these movies for the dancing. Right. 
they're not going to see some actor they've never heard of before soliloquize. They're not going to see it for the plot about always like rich, handsome white men redeeming themselves. Yeah. That's not the appeal of these movies, I think. So why wouldn't they get away from that? More dancing. More dancing. Less stupid plot, less bland characters. They have colorful characters in this movie, but they don't showcase them nearly as much as much more Mm. boring characters. More training montages. Yeah. It should just be all that. Just give us all the fun stuff. Yeah. There's no reason that... 60% of the way through the movie, they have to get bogged down in the whole thing of like, oh, there's a misunderstanding. You used me. And now we're going to have sad montages of people looking down. You don't need that kind of stuff. It's a dance movie. It should just be dancing. Exactly. Yeah, I I would have to agree with that. But I think I thoroughly liked this movie. Yeah, it's, again, it's enjoyable. I think if we go back to like, if you haven't listened to this podcast before, my thing is that I'm like the... uh, pretentious grumpy one grump yeah Yeah. and you were like the fun loving one i love fun but in the movies you brought at the beginning you're like you don't like these movies because you're a snob and i was like no no there's good bad and then there's bad bad right like uh, your bride wars and your something's got to give these movies i think are fun and this is therefore conclusive proof i am not a snob (laughs) (laughs) you heard it here folks (laughs) because i had a great time watching step up 3d we had a lot of fun and i uh i think some of like there were like really great moments in this movies and then they really like solidified how much i love their dance montages they did some fun things with the camera this time because it was a 3D movie. And so it like, I think it was a winner for me. I think they actually did less fun things with the camera because it was a 3D movie. Because here in the dance sequences, we didn't get the same amount of camera movement that we usually do. Right. Rather, it's like straight on and have people dancing right at you. Right. Which I think is effective because you get to see everything, but it relies on that a lot because it's a 3D movie. Yeah. So this one came out at like the height of when they were really showing off 3D. And this is a franchise that had a lot of money behind it. And so I think they were doing all of the like really fun things that 3D could do, like the bubbles at the beginning and like balloons lots of bubbles in this movie and like just lots of like kicks out towards the audience and that kind of thing and i think that really kind of added to like the showmanship of the movie yeah well should we get into it let's just go through the movie and talk about how it's uh, your favorite movie ever let's do it it's not my favorite movie <laughs> ever but top three mm, top five top five movies ever top ten Top, top, 10. 10 top 10 movies whoa, ever? Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, no, we have to stop the whole podcast. What? You're saying Step Up 3 is in your top 10 movies ever? Maybe top 20. <laughs> it keeps going down. Top 20. So you're saying this is like a 10 out of 10 movie? This is like a 7 out of 10. Wait, wait, no, no, no. So your top 20 movies? Yeah. You include 7 out of 10s in there? I think so. I don't think I think you're really underestimating how many movies you've seen. <laughs> yeah, probably. You've given twenty movies nine or ten out of ten that we've done on this podcast. Already. Yeah, you're right. I love when you quote me back to me. <laughs> That's my favorite but thing. <laughs> we, we have the st- we keep the stats. We I have know. spreadsheets. I know we do. It's something that you could very easily look up. So you think this is a, a top ten movie, top twenty movie ever? Mm, quite possibly. So every Miyazaki movie you've seen is in your top ten. So from movies I've gotten you to watch for this podcast, by your ratings, more than half of your top 10 favorite movies are movies you've watched for the first time for this podcast. Yes. All right. Wow. (laughs) This is just a really good episode for you. Yeah. (laughs) Shocked. But anyways, I said we're going to get into it, so let's get into it. Okay. So this movie starts with Moose. And who's Camille? Do we know Camille? But before that, it starts with that documentary footage. Oh, I forgot but not about documentary the documentary footage. footage. Yes. It has it like the camera that says recording on the bottom and right. still has the like, guidelines on the screen. So you know it's a camera. I think we know what cameras are like. And we also know that when you're recording, it doesn't record the part that says recording. Yeah. They like, should stop doing that. Yeah, they should. But it's it's how they let you know that this is like amateur footage. But it looked like it. Yeah, we'd know just based on the footage. Yeah, but that, 
I actually liked because I know this movie isn't going to try to be something like huge and grand, mm-hmm. but when they're talking about like, no, dance was a way for me to express myself. The dance was a way, a path to freedom for me. All of those things. Like, I'm not a dancer, but I like that. It gave me insight into these characters. It gave some gravity to this uh, world of dance. Mm-hmm. I thought it was fun. No, it was a nice. it was a nice way in. It was a nice way to kind of see some of the characters before we actually get to meet them. Yeah, and all of the people in there were very multicultural. Mm-hmm. There's all sorts of different accents. And I thought those were going to be like actual people, but it turns out they are, in fact, just actors. Yes, in the movie, which was it was a fun way to do some like really quick, deep background on these people. Yeah. Without them having to be like, oh, I'm from Buenos Aires and I love to dance. And here's my twin brother. She's doing a dance right now. Again, they can't see. Also likes to dance. Yeah. And so like you kind of lose the thing that like in some like movies kind of like this where they like say really basic bios about themselves out yeah. loud and it's just like yeah, kind of nobody cheesy talks like and that. like nobody says this ever. And so this was a fun way to kind of get background on the main characters or like the kind of background main characters and get to know them without having to have those like weird soliloquies that don't actually happen in the real world. But then we get reintroduced to our good buddy, Moose. Moose. I I love Moose. I think Moose is good. Yeah. He's a likable character, which this franchise does not have many of. Exactly. And I think it's hilarious that he is, he carries the Step Up franchise from now until pretty much the end. Oh. So I don't have any knowledge of movies going on after this, but... I hopefully will get to watch some. I know that one of them was a Chinese film. So I am very excited if we get to watch that one. I don't think Moose is in that one. No, I don't think. Uh, I think that's kind of like an off-brand step-up movie. Yeah. But um, he is in the next like three step-up movies. Which we're going to watch all of? Hopefully. All right. Um, but yeah, so we see Moose. Moose is fun. He's kind of an underdog and he's promised his parents that he won't dance anymore because he's going to become an engineer. Right. And he's at NYU and it's his first day of classes or it's orientation week or something. Yes. And he's with his friend Camille, who we find out is Tyler Gage or Channing Tatum's foster sister. Yeah, and it's the same actor who does that little dance with him as yes. a, as a child way back then. But why would they have the same last name? That's We couldn't figure that one out. Yeah. But they are related and it's amazing that she never mentions that in the movie. Yeah. Like she's related at least by last name to one of the most what they tell us is one of the most famous touring dancers in the world. And who went to the same school. And I think we're led to believe that Camille went to that school too because... After? Yeah. So you'd think that would come up. And also they're desperately looking for good dancers. And she you'd think doesn't she'd be join like, in until the last like third of the movie. Or that. Or like, hey, my uh, my brother is Tyler Gage. And everyone should be like what your brother's tyler gage yeah. that would be a huge deal to these street dancers and then he could come in and uh he join their crew yeah but they didn't have the budget for that they didn't have the budget for training tatum the mom and dad were funny and the mom was uh what's her name uh i don't know her name and then while they're on campus they're uh, walking around and then they see like dance battles going on yeah. and people are like throwing down money and betting yeah. on it in real time like it's a game of craps. That was the strange addition to this movie was the fact that like there's now betting going on with street dancing. Dancing in this movie is treated like like underground dog fighting. Mm-hmm. So it's like shady and it's illegal and cops are after them, but they're always like there's people throwing down money all the time. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird. It's a weird approach to dance. I like it. I think they should have leaned into that more. At times they do. And I think those are the best times of the movie. And I hope the series progresses to do that more. Yeah. Maybe at the end of this, I assume we have like 40 minutes left. <laughs> By the end, let's pitch what we want the next step up to be. Okay. I okay. think I can write a movie in my head in the you background. You write multiple movies, and Kim always loves them. Okay. Well, now the pressure's on. <laughs> 
And Sarah from Book Club also loves all of your rewrites for movies. Well, I can't let Sarah down. <laughs> um, so Moose, we find out, is majoring in electrical engineering. And in the final scene with his parents, he promises his father that he won't dance again. Yeah. I kind, because it's such like a dangerous yeah, thing to do in this world. I kind of wish that this had been the main like conflict Absolutely. was that like parents 100%. weekend happened and the parents all came back and saw their kids in school or like a couple months after or whatever. And then he had to go to the dance battle and like someone had to cover for him. But this was instead they made it romantic and it didn't really. And they brought in different characters, although they set up a pretty fun movie because yeah. then he sees uh there's this like villain who we learn is named Kid Darkness. Yeah. And he's dancing and Moose like accidentally kind of gets roped into dancing against him. Yes. And, and uh, he beats him. And he beats him. Although I'd argue Kid Darkness is better. Kid Darkness was amazing. Kid Darkness looked like he was dancing in stop motion, but he wasn't. He was great. And again, we say this in every time we do one of these movies. I don't really know dancing. I can. I know what looks good. This guy looked better than pretty much everyone else yes. in the movie and needed to be featured more prominently. True. And then we kind of never see Kid Darkness again. Not really. He's a kind of in the bit. background of all of the House of Samurai dances, but he's not like the main guy. And if you're like, wait, did she just say House of Samurai? We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And uh, he dances, and then, like, the cops come, and he has to run away. And then a uh, generic handsome guy says, follow me. Luke. And Luke, of course, yeah. Luke, Luke Catcher. John. Luke Catcher? Yeah. That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but anyways, Luke Catcher jumps through a hot dog stand for no reason and says, oh, come with me. You're B-Fab. And he's like, what? You're born from a boombox, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's like a saying in this movie. Apparently, that's a thing that people say to each other. And then this random handsome guy who's much older than Moose, because Moose is like 17, because he's just starting university. Mm -hmm. Or maybe 18. Maybe 18, yeah. And this guy is uh, much older and says, hey, come with me. Come to this alley. I have a car in this alley. And he just rips off the tarp from a car parked in a random alley. Yeah. And says, hey, get in. And he goes, okay. And then he just drives him around Manhattan. To a warehouse of some sort. Yeah, but first they spend all of their budget on that uh, New York song. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot that was in this movie. And there's like a really good looking shot of them yeah. driving uh, like uh, by Times Square and stuff. Yeah. And so this is the first movie where we have like actual songs. Oh, there were songs in the other one. Were there? Yeah, definitely. You knew most of them. Did I? Yeah. Oh. And I even knew a few. Tells you how well I pay attention. <laughs> um, but in this one, there was more songs that I liked. Because yes. we had some bus rhymes. We had a little outcast in there. And so that kind of changed the feeling of the film. It felt a little bit more commercial is the wrong word, but like like mainstream. It seemed like it had a bi bigger budget, yes. even though it didn't. Uh, I don't think it had a bigger budget than the last one. It was pretty comparable, I believe. But regardless, this movie looks good. It does. It is a very good looking movie. Better than uh, part two, but it was still the same director, who is uh, John M. Chu, who has done quite a few big things because he went on and followed Channing Tatum to the G.I. Joe movies. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then he did, um, he has a bunch of other dance movies, but he did Crazy Rich Asians. Right. I enjoyed that movie. I thought it was good. And it looked very good. I it think John Chu has a good eye. It was beautiful. Um, so the previous uh, step up to the streets uh, had a $17.5 million budget. Oh, this, this looks one, like a $30 million movie. This one had a $30 million budget. There you go. So I thought the other one was higher. But yeah, no. this bigger budget and it shows. It looks very good. Yeah, I uh, I really liked the look of this movie. There were some really cool kind of like surround shots of things that they were by, like around. And um, it was kind of neat because this one is based almost exclusively on the streets or in clubs. Yeah, unlike the streets. Yeah, which was... Which was in uh, ballet academy. Kind of mostly based in a dance academy. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so you kind of see... It's a little grittier, this one. Oh, I'd say the opposite because the other ones were like all about like Baltimore and this one is all Manhattan and glitzy. Mm. 
I was just thinking it's grittier because they have this like warehouse that they're about to lose to foreclosure and like yeah but this warehouse looks like it costs about seven million dollars yeah. and then has another ten million dollars of crazy furnishings yes true so let's jump into that because so he's been abducted by this guy named luke yeah and this movie gets abducted by Luke because you think, oh, it's going to be about uh, Moose. Moose and Kid Darkness and he's going to have to battle him and get back into dance and he finds his love of dance and then he learns that he can do both. The end. Great movie. We love it. Classic Archie conundrum. <laughs> yeah, that's a good movie. But no, that's not the movie you're going to get. That is like the C story of this movie, maybe. Yes. So they go to this club <laughs> and he says, oh, I'm six months behind on my mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> Which must be like a million dollars a month. Yeah. This warehouse in the middle of Manhattan yeah. is huge. It's multi-leveled. So what are some of the things that we have in this? Give me one room in this, uh, which they call the House of Pirates. Yes, the House of Pirates. Um, so there's like this room that has all sorts of like soft panels where they can like jump around and do flips and stuff in and it has foam pits and it has foam pits there's another room that the walls are just made of boom boxes that was so unnecessary because like did you wire them all together that's far too much sound for one room and also that's not even quality sound you'd be better off with a few better speakers like but we're not here speaker. for my audio file podcast which and there's a room that is just later bunk beds right but it also has like a tent a tent and a huge open space in it. And there's yeah. tents and like hammocks and stuff. They have like bunk beds four high. And then there's an entire room dedicated to sneakers. Right. The yes. vault. The vault. There's the sneaker room where Moose, who was attracted by Luke's fancy Nike sneakers. Some Nike dunks. Which he followed and then ended up in this dance battle. Yeah. Um, he sees all of these sneakers on the wall and they're like, you have to earn your kicks. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a couple questions. Do your feet change size so you fit into like the family sneakers? No, the sneakers change size to your feet. So they're magic. Yes. Okay. And there is a, a little bit of magic, I think, in this movie. <laughs> There's no consistency. No. It's not like, hey, it's our world and people like to dance. It's not a full on musical where there's dancing and it's just part of that world. Mm -hmm. It goes in between, and sometimes there is, like, magic things that happen. Yeah. So, like, because, like, if you're really into sneakers and you're like, oh, I have to earn my sneakers, someone just buys you a pair of sneakers in your size. That would, that would kind of be what would happen. But here, they're like, you have to earn your way into picking whatever sneakers you want from the wall. I think it's more like a Harry Potter situation. Yeah. Like, you get sorted into the ones that are right for you. But wouldn't it just be whatever size are like a ten and a half? <laughs> Whichever pair are a ten and a half? That would make more so sense. There's like a hundred sneakers on that wall. What if they're all only Luke's size and Luke has like unnaturally small feet? Then everyone else is fucked. Yeah, which is why I think your feet change sizes when you're ready for the sneaker. So then you're going to have small feet and then you'll have to learn to dance with different sized feet. I guess. I think it's easier if their shoes are just magic. And yeah. they changed to you. Also, I don't I don't know about sneakers. So like I've never really danced in sneakers. I've owned like one pair of jazz sneakers and I owned them for like 15 years because I never used them. But dancing in sneakers is really hard because of like the stick and the grip of them. I think a lot of the dancing they're doing, it probably helps out. Probably. But when because you're... Because the only time they're doing sliding stuff, there's all that powder on the ground, and then they use that to their oh, advantage. Oh, I sliding. forgot about all the dust, the dust dance, which yeah. we will get to. Oh, we'll get to it. But like as a dancer, you practice in the shoes you're going to wear at your competition. You don't just get new shoes the day of the competition. What part of magic shoes aren't you getting? I don't know. <laughs> they're I... magic. Sorry. Okay. They're magic shoes. They'll be perfect for you yep. when you put them on and you get sorted. If you earn them. You get sorted into your shoes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But then also this warehouse has a club on the main level. And yeah. a giant club. It's huge. And like, how are they not making money? And it's packed. And it seems like this is a, a Wednesday or something. We have but no it's idea packed. what time it is. And they're saying like, oh, people don't come into the club as much. But it's there are literally hundreds of people in there. 
Yeah. And they have like surveillance cameras. Yeah. So this creepo, Luke, is watching people on video and goes, oh, she's here again. And is just stalking this woman. Yeah. So then goes down with the camera and just starts recording her. Which is super creepy. Yeah. But uh, this is a meet cute. Yeah, apparently. So I think everything that involves Luke and what's her name? Natalie? Natalie. I don't like. And Mm -hmm. then everything that doesn't involve them is great. I agree with you. I think we could have done without the Luke and Natalie love story because Moose and Camille are way more relatable and cute. Yeah. And I think if we had played up that and the fact that his parents asked him to never dance again and become an engineer, that's your movie. So I think we could have just gotten rid of all the Camille and Luke stuff. They could be more lovable backup people or like moose's mentor or just not in it because luke is one of the weaker dancers in the movie oh, and he's sure. only in it because he's handsome yeah so luke thinks that with moose's skills they could win a one hundred thousand dollar grand prize in the world jam championships which would solve all their financial problems that gets you like a week in that place right this place is at least 10 times that a month And when Moose is in the bathroom of the club, Kid Darkness and his samurai crew attack him. And by attack, do they beat him up? No, they just dance at him. They dance at him really aggressively. Because sometimes in this movie, you can be physically hurt by someone defeating you in a dance? Apparently. So they treat a lot of the dances like this where like someone's been like beaten to a pulp. From they got served so because hard, someone they was get better at dancing than them, yeah. yeah, which is just not how dancing works. So, I've calculated it because Luke at some point says he's five months behind on the mortgage for this warehouse, right? So, it's twenty thousand dollars a month. What and that would only pay their back mortgage, <laughs> yeah. What are they going to do going forward? And that's never addressed, no. They're like, oh, this money will save us Mm -hmm. for the next week. Maybe 20 of those people who are living there pay some fucking rent. Right? (laughs) This has a lot of similarities with the movie Rent. Everyone acts like they can't work. Like they just need to dance 24 hours a day. Well, you dance is life. They're born from a boombox. They're beef abs. (laughs) I think if they got like part-time jobs they'd be able to like pay rent on this place with the club earnings or just sold their giant uh speaker or shoe collections uh yeah sell a pair of shoes a month because they they tout them as being very like exclusive and like elusive shoes that you can't get anywhere so you'd think that they'd be able to like sell a pair of those a month and pay their rent that's how sneakers sneakers are expensive right yeah so um, Moose is getting danced at and he runs away. And that, I think, was all pretty fun. Like the dance in the bathroom was pretty cool. Yeah. And they're chasing him around and he's scared to get um, served. Danced that's the, at, that's the yeah. proper yeah. terminology, correct? Yes. But then the his new crew, the uh, House of Pirates, pirates. Yeah. They're, they're houses in this one. It's not crews. No, it's House of Pirates and House of Samurais. Samurai. Just one. Yeah. Okay. No, the plural of samurai is samurai. Okay. Yes. But if you we really want to me. get into it, these guys are far more ninja-like than samurai-like. Oh, they should be because, house of ninjas. Yeah. It's against the Bushido code to do a lot of the things these guys do. Dancing. No, the uh, the sneaking part. Oh. You're never supposed to sneak up on some. I, I like samurai stuff. <laughs> I went to a lot of museums in Japan. I was and... thinking samurais had the same code as the town from Footloose. No dance. The, I, I'm not sure. That might be part of it. Mm. But you definitely shouldn't sneak up on people and attack them from behind. Oh, that's that's fair n- fight. That's ninja shit. It's got to be a fair fight. They should be the house of ninjas. <gasps> they should be. You're right. Because they do like to like... That one guy s- crawls up a wall yeah. in the bathroom. That was awesome. I and loved like, it. And all of a sudden, he's like washing his hands and he's like, what? Yeah. There's like 20 people in here chasing me around. But then his uh, pirates stop the samurai with violence Mm -hmm. i think you know what let them dance at him if that solves the whole thing what 
what's the bad part of that? Like, oh, he got danced at the end. And now there is no more, no violence. But then yeah. instead they get into a fight to stop them from dancing at him. Yeah. That seems like a weird escalation. Yeah, because like in the past movies, there's been no fighting. It's just been dance. Oh, there was uh, some people got beat up in all of them, didn't they? Did they? Yeah. I think in the first one, they definitely did. In the second one, that guy gets uh, punched a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> punch a bunch. Punch a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Yeah. That. Okay. That was. But they're playing it as getting beaten in a dance off is worse than fighting. Mm-hmm. So this is like there's they're saving the violence by only punching people. Right. Which is again weird. And then we have Kid Darkness, who is awesome to watch on screen. Yes. Very cool. We have Moose, very good dancer and like a uh, charming kid and mm-hmm. comedic. So that's going to be our thing. No. Instead, both of them have two handsome, tall, white White guys guys. step in. Also rich. Yes. Why do they have to make the heroes rich in each one? These movies are all about like street dancing, but then... The villain is always rich. No, but the hero is too. Moose? No, but he's not the hero. He gets... At this point, he gets displaced from being the hero of this movie. Right. And also Moose is kind of rich. Yeah. But uh, Luke was gifted all of this stuff Mm -hmm. it's not like he was working in like washing dishes to pay for his million dollar loft it was given to him yeah so we find out that julian who is the leader of the house of samurai used to be a pirate right oh and that all gets explained and in this unnecessarily convoluted plot yes and so apparently julian was jealous of luke according to luke and according to julian he got kicked out yeah but we had these characters that i liked but they both get replaced with the blandest people around oh super bland yeah no i liked kid darkness i love moose so great that one scene is where the movie loses like everything yeah because now it's, it's like a, a completely whole different movie, movie. it's and like two 45 minute movies yeah so it gets worse from here on in i mm-hmm. think but then moose goes to class because he is going to be an engineer after all and one of my favorite bits is uh when he asks the kid next to him during a lecture like hey what's your name and he goes silence my name is Silence during class. <laughs> <laughs> that was very And he funny. plays it very well. And that was a good, like, funny engineering because engineering students tend to be very, like, focused and serious. Not like those dancers. No. Too much whimsy and fun. Although I think these movies taught us that you have to be really serious, right? Isn't that the lesson of the last two movies? That if you just, like, joke around, you're never going to make it. You have to be serious and all in to dance. Yes, you have to be all in. I don't know what they're trying to teach us, but let's not even worry about that. (laughs) So then also we forgot that after that dance battle and following that lady around with a camera, she goes like, hey, can I sleep here? And he's like, all right. And he gives her the tent. And Natalie sleeps in a tent in the house of corpses? No, clowns. No. Pirates. 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 (laughs) And she's like, oh, thanks. I was living in... Was it Paris? London. London. There's a weird bit of exposition dump that goes nowhere. She goes like, I used to live all around. I've been living in London for the last two years, but now I have nowhere to stay. Yeah. Never comes up again. No. Like no point in adding that dialogue in. Yeah. And uh, then she just kind of, maybe she's trying to make herself sound like like a nomad, like she has no home. Mm -hmm. But we find out later in the movie that she's rich. Yeah. And she's from New York. And that her brother is the leader of the House of Samurai. Julian? Julian. What a dick. And then uh, she wakes up and she starts training for dance, of course, because that's all they do. And he goes, no, let's train out there. Yeah. And And then they just do parkour. So is this like the height of parkour too? I guess. I think, yeah, probably. It was was dumb. It was dumb. No, it's always, parkour has always been dumb. Yeah. But... I think this was like the height of when people were like saying parkour whenever they were doing anything. And I like when Moose is in with uh, their tech guys because they have a whole like tech room as well. Yes. And Moose just takes a watch battery and tapes it to an LED and a magnet. 
And then the guy's like, whoa, you know lights? <laughs> He's like, like, this guy knows lights. That's something that everyone can do. No, you just attach the two ends to yeah. the thing that has power. And that's how lights work. Yeah. We used to make those like LED throws. We'd call them magnetic ones and like throw them up on buildings and those try to make graffiti neat. like that. I wish they had done more with those. Like written like a, a sign of like, come back to dance or like whatever meaningful thing i wish that those had been used better yeah there's a marker throughout the movie whenever they a guy would walk by and he'd have some of them on them they're like oh no who's here yeah and then they would see one of their buddies but i think they could have done something like the, the grand gesture should have been done in those and then we get our first training montage which yes. was great oh, loved it i love a training montage and then at the end of it she uh natalie is watching luke's footage because he goes around filming people like a creep and she goes, you're a filmmaker, and is very excited by that. And then her whole thing later is, like, leave your dance crew and start over. Yeah. Like, he clearly has, like, a f- like not a family, but, like, a found family to support. Yeah. By owning this building. They all live there, and they're all, like, homeless without him. Basically. They all are jobless, and they have no skills outside no. of dancing. He can't so, abandon and them. And she's like... Come to California, we'll take a train, and you can go to this film school. But is that his journey? Like, dance was his prison, and now he's escaping it to make movies? I don't know. It seems like he loves dance, and he loves recording the dancing. And he had fun, good. He had fun making that movie. Yeah, like, and you're making a hundred grand a year dancing. Yeah. I think you found your thing. It's I, dancing. For sure. So... Like, I think it's very, like, selfish of her to be like, leave all of that and come to California film time with me. She's doing to him what he does to Moose. Yes. Because he shows up in the middle of Moose's first class and says, hey, fuck that stuff. Come dance with us. And Moose is like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Midway through through their parkour. (laughs) Yeah. He does it about five or six times throughout the movie. Yeah. Of like, oh, yeah, forget all your friends. Come dance with us. We need you right now. Yeah. He's a dick. Natalie's a dick. Moose is actually a dick in this one, too. A little bit. Yeah, but he learns. He learns. The other ones don't learn. No, he learns. He redeems himself by the end of the movie. And it's nice. Like, I I kind of feel easier forgiving Moose for being kind of a dick. Because he got swept up in this, like, cool new life of his. And he was kind of forced. He was bullied into it. Very much so. They're like, leave your test. Come dance. Yeah. Where are you? (laughs) We can see you. We're outside the yeah, window. Yeah, we are stalking you. But then they go to Thunderdome. Thunderdome. It's like straight Mad Max. There's a guy with an eye patch and a staff with a bull skull on it. Yes. And like, I think Tina Turner's there. <laughs> and they're just in Thunderdome. And that was awesome because I think that's probably the best part of this whole movie because they have to battle a team of dusty steampunk steel mill workers or like coal miners was that the dusty one or was that the water one no this is the dusty one. this is the dusty one yeah because they're mining all that coal right they're wearing no shirts but like big leather suspenders and stuff and they they somehow the dust doesn't stick to them but it sticks to everything else yeah and there's lots of cool slides and like lifts and stuff with the dust I think best part of the whole movie. I think it was a very cool montage. Yeah. Well, this one's not a montage. They just show the full dance. But like, it was a very cool part of the movie. Yeah. What was your favorite dance, if not this one? Um, I think I liked where Moose and Camille dance. Oh, the singing in the rain type one. That was fun. Yeah, that was good too. And then I also like the montage where they're training at the arcade. Right. Which we'll talk about, but. Um, I, this was my favorite. I think it this was very dance cool. Was, no, it was very, was very cool. I just think the other two dances that I mentioned had like more whimsy and fun. Right. I think this one was just a more impressive straight up dance because mm-hmm. the team that they're against, the house, the house of coal miners, <laughs> is uh, were they were the best dancers. I think yes. outside of maybe Kid Darkness. Kid Darkness was great. He was amazing. Yeah. I was amazed by some of the stuff that he did, and I was like. This looks like it was heavily edited, but I bet it wasn't. And that's why he's good at dancing. That's why? That's why. And we get introduced to, like, all of their crew, which is, um, well, how would you describe them? They're, like, a multicultural ragtag bunch. 
Yeah. And you think like, especially right after the beginning, you're like, oh, this movie, finally, we're going to get some more diversity yes. in this series. Because they always like, tease it, but they're like, yeah, but not really. Those people don't actually get to talk or anything. Hands and this movie dudes, is going to start with it. So you're like, awesome, I'm on board. Yeah. And then a handsome, boring white man yeah. comes in <laughs> and says like, yeah, yeah, forget those guys. They're not going to talk anymore. I'm going to say everything and you will forget me very quickly. <laughs> He's like, he could be, if you were a charismatic, handsome white guy, that would be cool. Uh-huh. But they're so boring. Why would they put these boring dudes as leads? Like, there's a lot of actors in Hollywood that are like vaguely blonde, pretty muscular, and have zero personality. Yeah. And they just keep picking those ones. But there's also a lot of actors in Hollywood that have like different hair colors and are actually like fun to watch (laughs) yeah but this movie not only does it not fulfill that promise of uh, diversity that they were set up at the beginning the only time these guys do anything it's usually a comedic relief Mm -hmm. and about half the jokes are about how they have accents there's Mm -hmm. a lot of jokes about how people can't understand that was a little frustrating because I feel like they've made this movie that has, like, a, it's a very multicultural cast, even if they don't let them, like, be main characters. But then but half, don't even the let jo- them talk. half the jokes are like, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. Or, like, you have an accent and I don't have an accent. But then th- they set up the black dude at the beginning. They're like, oh, he's the leader of the group. Yes. Never talks again for the rest no. of the movie. And we barely see him yeah. in the dances. But they, like... Show him as being this amazing dancer. What did you think of the robot dude? Um, I could have done without him. Me too. It was a neat moment in one of their dances. So I like people who are great at robot stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't think this guy's particularly good. I think I see street performers who are better than him pretty often. Yeah. But I don't know. I think people love him. That's so weird. And I think people love him and that's why he was in the movie so much. But I think that there were some like way better things happening in that movie that should have had more screen time than the robot guy. Yeah. He always like comes in and then everything stops because they're like, oh shit, he's going to do it. Yeah. And then it's not particularly Because last movie, Moose did a whole like Michael Jackson-esque thing. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of his style. Yeah. I guess. Um, being like a skinny, like awkward guy. But Moose did a side by side robot thing with a robot guy. And he should have just done the Moose thing, which is the like Michael Jackson esque dancing. I think Moose knows no bounds. He he goes where the dance takes him. Moose does what Moose wants. Yeah. Mm. Can't control the Moose. No. Don't try, it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's what his tattoo says. True. The moose is loose. Oh, is that what that means? (laughs) Yeah, you hear that a lot? Sometimes. You hear the phrase, the moose is loose pretty often? Sometimes. Oh, they're always talking about this kid. Oh. And his dancing. It's moose from Step Up. Yeah. Oh, see, I didn't know that. And when they say the juice is loose, they're referring to the acquittal of O.J. Simpson. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I knew that. (laughs) And then there's a little throwaway thing of... uh, Luke saying, oh, I created this dance warehouse for my parents. And then we never go back to it. Which is very confusing. There's just so many unneeded plots. Is your parent Channing Tatum? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that would be a good twist. Is your dad Channing Tatum? Because that is the only reason you create a weird, wacky fun house of like dance studios. Okay. I'm I'm currently background writing Channing Tatum into my uh, (laughs) movie. Okay. Oh, and then there is a Halloween party coming up, and Moose, remember uh, Camila? Camille? Camille. We haven't seen her in like 40 minutes, but now she's back. She's back, and she's very disappointed in Moose because he was dancing and not at the Halloween party. Well, she doesn't know that he's out dancing. She right. keeps he keeps the dancing secret from her, even though she is a dancer She's and their Tyler best friend. She's Gage's sister. But for inexplicable reasons, he doesn't say anything about the dancing. And she's mad when she finds out about this that 
he didn't include her in dancing. Yeah, but that's much later. Because yeah. he still doesn't. Because this is when they're going to decide to go to the Halloween, Halloween party. party and dress as the Olsen twins. And First, he- she's already going with somebody else because yes. he keeps ditching her to dance and not saying what he's doing. And he won't pick up his phone. Yeah. And he's like... He's just being a dick to her. He's being a dick. He's unreachable. So she decides to go with a friend of hers. And, and they're going to be the Olsen twins. They're going to be the Olsen twins. And he comes along and says, no, forget your friend. Uh, Do it with me instead. And she's like, yeah, okay. So we have Natalie saying, hey, forget your life, Luke. Come with me to California. And he's like, all right. And then Luke says, hey, Moose, forget engineering school. You're going to be a a dancer. dancer. And he's like, yeah, all right. And then we have Moose saying to Camille, Camille, hey, forget all of your friends. Come and just do things with me. And she's like, yeah, all right. Yeah. There's just a chain of people being mean for no reason. So one thing I had a problem with in this movie was like there was no romantic chemistry between Moose and Camille until the very end. No, and there shouldn't be. I will talk about the kiss because there there shouldn't be one. They're best friends and they make a point of saying we're best friends. We grew up together. It should have been best friend chemistry where they were doing everything and they were like super in sync and they're like, oh man, why can't we room together? Like that should have been the plot of the movie as opposed to Camille secretly being in love with Moose and Mm. Moose not knowing and then Moose falling in love with her at the end. Yeah. Like that, it was just really out of left field and it, those two actors don't have that kind of chemistry. I would argue same with the A romance story. Yes. And they are the A romance because they are A good looking and the other people are like lower level handsome. So that's why they're the B level romance. Because Natalie will wear a uh, tiny little half top and Camille won't. Right, right. <laughs> and Luke shows his abs and uh, Moose time. does not. Yeah. Yes. Yes, the bee romance stays fully clothed. So Luke takes Natalie out on like a dance date, I guess. Well, they only dance, so you could just say a date. The dance is implied. Yes. And um, it's like their romantic montage, basically. And they get Slurpees at one point, and he turns on a roof fan. Also, like full leader Slurpees. Yes. Like, giant. is Slurpee regional? Slurpee is Seven Eleven's version. Okay, so, so it's people it's, in America know what we mean when we say Slurpee because some places they're called um a slush, slushy, slush puppy. Sometimes slush puppy is the brand. Oh, okay, it's just like Slurpee is the brand or Froster here, but nobody calls it a Froster. No, it's always a Slurpee. It's like Kleenex. A slushy drink is what we're talking about. Yes, a slush drink. But they are like, I don't know how to describe it. They're like. They get up on a vent, which starts up. And then they start dropping drops of the Slurpee. And then those levitate for fun 3D effect. But we weren't watching it in 3D. So it's just a little bit odd. And then they kiss under the twirling Slurpee. Yeah. But then a bunch of other shit starts shooting up through the vent, like, which I think it was a, just like a bunch of asbestos. Oh, it has to be asbestos. Like, I had a hard time getting into this because I just kept thinking of the things that this fan was supposed to be sucking out of the building. And Moose has his first big engineering test then. And uh, what's that dude's name again? <laughs> Luke? Luke. <laughs> I'm always going to forget. Generic white dude. Um so then Luke says, uh, fuck your test. We're going to go dance. And he's like, okay, I guess. It's a competition. Yeah. It's, it's like a... 25% of my grade, but whatever. It's like a, a second competition that gets them access to the worldwide jam. Yeah. So I guess each one of these dances was a preliminary round right. of the world so jam. So you have to win one but I didn't to even win know the that other. until the very end. Which they don't actually describe. They, yeah, I'm only piecing it together They after. say that there's like they talk about the first one. They tell you that the fir- we have to win this to get into the worldwide jam. But then there's two and then it's like, oh well, yeah, no, we had to semifinals. Yeah, there's like the <laughs> quarterfinal. Yeah, preliminary semi-final and then the final so in this one they are going against the champions of all of asia (laughs) all of asia asia yeah (laughs) 
And I'm just going to put it out there. I think uh, the best dance crew in Asia is much better than these guys were. Oh, yeah. No, this was one of those montages where I was like, why did they win? Because I I think I believe I requested a uh, score sheet and a rubric. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, because like, first I just of all, like the coal know... miners should have won. Oh, 100%. And I just this like to know what they're medium. what they're scoring on because like are there required from a cheer coach perspective? I think they're scoring on how hard you get served. Mm. So I'd just like to know the breakdown of how they won. You want to see that score sheet? I want to see you that score see sheet. A rubric. Yeah, that's me. But because they are going against the best team in Asia now, uh, the audience is made up of like old Chinese man gambling. Yes, which is hilarious because they're like putting, it's it's literally like a gambling ring and they're like yeah. all putting, they all have stacks of bills in their hands. Everyone's like smoking and, and like throwing down the putting down money and they're all waving money around yeah. and it's super Which funny. I don't know how you bet that much on the fly. Like what kind of prop bets are going on? Right? You think it's just this team wins or this team wins, but no, there's a bunch more to it apparently. Well, that's why I want to see a score sheet because I feel like they're going to like bet on like, oh, is... Kid Darkness gonna land his triple triple or like well, I think it's more like um there's twenty to one odds someone comes in on a scooter and breaks the fountain and it floods the whole thing. <laughs> and then the one guy who put money on that, he yeah, pays off because Moose comes in, uh steals someone's scooter, I think. I think so. And uh and then comes in and like breaks open a pipe and floods the dance place and then the other dance crew like falls in a whole bunch of their lifts because they're all justifiably wet. because they're not used to dancing in water and they're also wearing white track suits but moose on the other hand as we saw established in part two yeah he's great at dancing in water so the team's like oh no what do we do and moose is like no i got this i'm a water dancer you guys didn't know that this is my favorite because it calls back dancing. to the previous movie yeah. where they dance in that like super ridiculously heavy rain and there's a lot of like water kicking and stuff so moose gets to like dance his true heart dance and uh kick some water around yeah and then they win and then it's somehow revealed that that bad guy is her brother and she's rich because she just like goes home she goes home and then her brother talks to her and she's like i heard your secret you got kicked out of the house of pirates and then her brother is like, he was jealous of me. That's why he kicked me out. And they have like a whole fight about it. And she's been sent there to infiltrate them. Yes. So. That's in like every movie and every romantic yeah. comedy, every dance movie too of like, oh, first I was only here for this reason. And first it was a bet that I'd go on a date with you. But now it turns out I actually love you. And I just hate it. No, it's a it's dumb. It's dumb. It's it's just done unless you're doing something new with it. Unless you're making like this could have been the whole movie was like her being sent in to infiltrate and we should have known it at the beginning. Yeah. Cuz then we would have cared. But instead it's just a end of the second act reveal yeah. so then that they could be angry for a while. It's manufactured conflict. I think it's it dumb. Is. I complain in every movie about this exact same thing. This movie is like three movies. And so this should have been a whole step up movie of like she was sent in from her former dance crew into this new dance crew so that they could win the worldwide jam. And um, do they ever say wide world jam? It's my favorite kind of jam. I like raspberry first, then world. Oh, then I'm, straw. you know, why I'm calling it the worldwide jam is because of worldwide cheer smack, which is the final bring it on movie. <laughs> final so far it's the world jam championships yeah that's what they're gonna win so i think natalie should have either been a double agent very clearly at the beginning of the movie or we should have just completely and then it could be her plot. movie and it's her being torn between her her brother and this new love this new guy that's yeah. better and we would have had like a clear love story between them and it would have made a lot more sense yeah after this, Julian, Natalie's brother, who is leader of the House of Samurai, um, texts Luke to come to her party. Right. But we don't know it's him. We just get an invite. We just get a text. And then, of course, Luke says, oh, hey, uh, Moose, you doing anything? Oh, you are? You're doing something really, really important and your relationship with your best friend depends on it? Okay, fuck that. You're coming with me to some weird, creepy, like, 
eyes wide shut bullshit party <laughs> with like it's like a cotillion it's like they were they're doing like weird partner dances that no one knows it seemed very um cultish yes yes 100 percent. that there's masks and old-timey dances and it was a very strange thing but of course luke and mook <laughs> Luke and Mook. <laughs> Luke and Mook break in. <laughs> Luke and Mook break in, <laughs> and they just steal some waiters' uh, jackets. Jackets, even though they're still asking for an invitation. If you have a jacket on, you don't need an invitation. Apparently not. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. And they just put masks on, and then you do a dance. And uh, Luke dances with Luke. Natalie. Somehow knows this choreographed dance. Yeah, so this knows. is like an old timey like Regency ball dance where there's like men parts and women parts, and you switch partners, and everyone knows where to be on the floor, and it's just like it's very intricate. And I'm sure the people who are actually attending this party spent a lot of time learning it and practicing. And two of the guys, I guess. Uh, Luke and Mook killed them because they're not there anymore and they take their spots. I assume so. I think instead of seeing the rack of clothes, it would have been better if they just see two guys and they're like, hey. And then we the in, implication is that they beat them up and took their clothes. <laughs> Lock them in a closet. Yeah. Classic stuff. Yeah. Um, so we never get an explanation of Luke and Mook deciding or realizing that Natalie is super rich. No. But we do get the uh, evil brother coming down and saying like, oh, yeah, this was a whole plan. Yeah. What is this party? No idea. No. Why are they wearing masks and doing 15th century dances? No idea. <laughs> but um, we never actually talk about the fact that Natalie is rich and she comes from this like super prestigious fancy world. Yeah. But um, so does Luke. Yeah. So again, to be a hero in a step up movie about dancing on the streets you should be real white rich. and rich yeah natalie is finally like exposed for being the sister of julian and for like being a double agent what a convoluted plot yeah like if i could just attempt here i know we're <laughs> just going over the same thing a yes. lot but there's a guy who created a warehouse of fun dancing because his parents died and that's what he felt he should do. Mm -hmm. And he threw someone out of the crew who was a really rich guy who then convinced his sister to go infiltrate that dance crew mm -hmm. and cause them to lose the world jam or at least get information. I don't know what her plot really was. Uh, yeah. And she comes from a world of um, eyes wide shut style parties with masks and I assume orgies that then follow. Ugh. At one time, this movie was about a kid named Moose going to school for the first time. Going to NYU. Going to NYU and it's the first day of school. Yeah. I did, like it's So this, convoluted. The beginning of this movie is so different from the end of this movie. And then I just wrote here, a uh, sad montage. I hate this part of the movie. Because yeah, this is the part where there is manufactured conflict and then everyone, everything has to fall apart. Because not only the relationship does, but then they're like, oh, we're being evicted from this place. Well, it makes sense. We're six months behind on our mortgage. And they break up and they're like, okay, everyone, um, you're homeless now. Bye. Yeah. So the, the warehouse is foreclosed on, basically. Mm -hmm. And so everyone is locked out. The bank has like completely like shut the door and locked it up so that they can't even get in. And everybody just kind of like goes their separate ways. Yeah. And- Luke gets a job at a diner. You should have been doing this a lot longer right? ago. And you should have invested some of those millions you had. Right? And Moose is like, oh, I'm going to study now and I'm going to be a better friend to Camille. And Camille finally gets it out of him that he's been dancing. Right. And so then they Why do. Why would that be a secret? Right? She loves dancing. Yeah. She is a dancer. She's, she could have helped you. She's Tyler Gage's sister. Yeah. Somehow. Um, so they do this cute singing in the rain dance. They do this like fun little dance through the streets. And there's like a, is it an ice cream truck? Yeah. This is like my second favorite sequence. It's fun. Because they come up and first of all, there's those two kids that are hilarious. Yes. And like that one like sassy little girl was like, Fuck you and your haircut, Moose, or whatever he says, she and says. And there's like, there's a line here. Or maybe that's more accurate yeah. of what she said. And I think both of them are just like, ah, 
there's a line here. Like, how could you butt in front of me for ice cream? Yeah. And Camille in this is dressed like a toddler from 1987. She's got like... High top sneakers with stripy socks, purple leggings, a stripy skirt, and like some kind of flash dance sweater. It's very strange. Um, and they go around and they dance. And it's a one shot, which was great. Like the camera doesn't cut this whole time. It was super fun. It's it's very well done. It looks awesome. And uh, I love that they go around and they ruin everyone's things. Yeah. Like they're breaking people's stuff. Yeah. And it's not like forgotten about people are like hey what are you doing you yeah. gotta hear the throwaway lines in the background yeah. as they break everyone's and like steal and people's garbage can lids and yeah. like and that lady sprays them with a the hose yeah that was great that was cute and that's kind of how they mend their relationship and they have a little heart to heart and she's like you should dance your heart is telling you to dance or whatever she says yeah you can do two things yeah archie archie andrews <laughs> Um, so this was kind of fun because she gets him, like, psyched up again to dance and he decides that he's gonna, like, he's gonna convince Luke that they need to, like, bring the group. He's gonna save the day. Yeah, he's gonna bring the group together. So he goes to Luke's work, which is at a, like, crappy diner. Where he's worked half a shift. Half, yeah. Like, he can't have worked here long. And Moose is, like, does a bunch of little dances about, like, how people were, like, iconic throughout the years through dance. And it was impressive. I love it. It was very impressive. He brings back his, like, Michael Jackson moonwalk. Mm -hmm. And he does, like, a bunch of really cool things. And then Luke, like, throws his apron down and walks out. And some guy's, like, I've been waiting a half an hour for coffee. He's really bad at his job. He's very bad at his job. So he walks out and... Is it outside the diner that all of his friends are waiting? Yeah, the uh, the, the clowns crew. are all there. Not the clowns. What pirates. Are they? The pirates are all there. <laughs> and he's like, this isn't enough people to like make up a crew. And we need a giant elaborate place to dance because I can't just dance in a studio no. or like a parking lot or something. That's not what I do. I kept saying like, why aren't they dancing in the streets? Because yeah. this is all about street dancing. But no, they need some kind of like crazy elaborate thing to dance in. How about an abandoned underground arcade? Yeah. Sounds good. So Because then they go to, I can't remember what her name was. Keto? Jenny Keto. Who was from part two and her family owns like a fun house or something. Something like that. So they're going to practice there. And then the whole Red Bucket crew shows up. Like all of the kids from the last one. The MSA crew? Yeah, whatever they're called. <laughs> <laughs> and Moose introduces each one and says, oh, they're great at this. They're great at this. And after this big thing about how he'd forgotten Camille and uh, he introduces everyone but her. Yeah. <laughs> and she doesn't get uh, an No, this is Tyler Gage's sister. And also, but no, a human, a human who is, who is dancing, but yes, the arguably the one with the most like dance pedigree in the entire group mm-hmm. is like, completely. and your best friend, and who your best you're friend. apologizing to for forgetting all the time, and, and that you, you just her. made out with. No, I thought they kissed at the end of the singing in the rain thing. Did they? I thought it's not until the end end when everyone starts making out. But yes, so they, they get like another half of a dance crew and start to like choreograph their stuff, I guess. And there's another montage. And um, there's all these kids because the girl whose parents own the arcade, she babysits for people who work there. Yeah. So there's just a bunch of carny kids. Just like a bunch of children. And then it's time for the world jam. And the bad brother says, like, if you throw the world jam, I will buy that warehouse and give it to you. Or he's already buying it or something. And you'll never have to, like, yeah. you'll you never have to it. worry about paying mortgage again. Which is a good deal. Take it's it. It's a fabulous deal. That's like a $20 million deal. Yeah, because you're going to get, what, a few months of mortgage payments? Yeah. It's really probably not even that. No. Yet do it. You could have it because f- you're forever and win it next year. You're winning the World Jam so you can have that place. Yeah. So you can rent that place. For another You will now own it. All month. of your friends can just live there and dance yeah. forever. Yeah. But no, he doesn't take it because that would be too easy. That would be far too easy. 
And uh, so they do this fabulous dance with children, which was hilarious. Right. Is Natalie, Natalie's not in the dance because first she's like, you gave me the strength to move to California. Why? How? Mm -hmm. Was that her plight? Did she not have that strength before? No. Never really discussed. And so they're they're doing like a weird back and forth kind of dance battle. Not weird because this is step up, but a back and forth kind of dance battle. And at one point, the pirate crew is being served by the samurais. You're being served? Yeah. Like some soft serve? Yeah. Um, and Camille is finally like, we can beat them. And she gets on stage with them. And her brother is like, how dare you dance with them? And there's almost like, a fist fight mm-hmm. and so then they dance as a unified team with camille and then they win and camille wasn't there for any of those rehearsals no but she's just that good in classic step up style they go back to the previous choreography yeah. <laughs> and uh just do it flawlessly and they do a really cool sequence with like those like light up leds in their clothing which was very neat to watch. And they change color, and whoever's at the center of the dance is like a different color. And but it should have been, they should have dimmed the lights for that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Because it was still full light. Yeah. Which was an odd choice. Yeah. But it was kind of neat to see the like the light up and the differentiation between people in the dance. Because yeah, he knows lights. He knows lights. Oh, and also in the meantime, she had said, hey, you're a filmmaker. You should make this a film, which he was doing already. And then he goes, oh, okay. Edits it in a weekend. And he goes, here it is. Gives it to her. Yeah. And now she's like, you're a filmmaker now. Yeah. And so at the end of the movie, she leaves him a jacket on the floor at the World Jam. Um, Just on the stage with like dozens of people on that stage. Yeah, just everyone's jumping around and it's on the floor with an envelope and a folder. And she's like, I had to share your film. And then there's like this funny clip art piece of paper that says, you're accepted to California Film School. Also, all your friends go to NYU. Yeah. Very good film program yeah. there. Very good film, acting, dance. Like you could literally do everything that you're doing right now at NYU. But no, he's going to board a almost four-day train yeah. to California from New York. Taking that old train to California. Yeah. And she just leaves. Doesn't say goodbye or anything. Just says, hey, you got into film school. Oh, she doesn't say it. She just leaves a package on the ground. That says you got into film she school. She leaves an unintended bag. And just imagines that he'll figure all this out. And somehow he finds it. He could very well have not known that he got into film school. Yeah. And then he wouldn't have gone to the train station and he would have just like continued dancing with the pirates. Yeah, so she leaves that moment. Doesn't even celebrate or anything. No. And then I think about two days later, we cut to her going to the train. Yes. What was she doing in those two days? So Moose gets... A, like, fancy pair of shoes. They, like, reestablish the house of pirates and, like, move in and everything. There's, like, a whole montage of them, like, doing all sorts of stuff, which clearly took, like, two days. Yeah. And then, yeah, he, the uh, pirates meet Camille at the train station and then Luke walks down the stairs like he came separately. Yeah, that... Like, they don't all live in the same house? Well, I think it was meant... Like, did he not know that the pirates were going? Because he's not surprised to see them all there. But they didn't show up together. I think, I, he, it was just I think he wanted his grand entrance. But he walked down the stairs, like, not knowing things were going to happen. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It, it was, was weird. weird. It was weird. It was unnecessary. But then he goes, like, yeah, I'm going to California on the train with yeah. you. And then they kiss. And then Moose is in charge of the pirates? Well, he, Luke wasn't even in charge before. Yeah. It was that dude who never, I don't even know if he's even named. I don't think we get his name. But yeah, he's like, he's like the Rafiki of the pirates. He just like gives some like wisdom every so often. Wait, who's Rafiki? From Lion King. No, I know. I know who Rafiki is, but who is the Rafiki? Who are you referring to? Um, Luke? No. J- Jason? He's like the black guy who like... Oh, the guy with the accent. Who's yeah. always very grumpy looking. Oh. But I didn't know he was a Rafiki type. I'll have to... He just gives a little bit of like knowledge every so often. 
And being inspired by that kiss, Moose and Camille then kiss. Yes. And everyone's like, oh shit, that's a thing now? Yeah. And now they're in love. I guess. <laughs> Surprise! They're in love. And Luke gives Moose, he just brought a loose pair of shoes to the train station with Oh him. yeah, so if he didn't know that they were all coming, but he brought those shoes with him? Yeah, that is where that doesn't really make any sense. He's like, here's some, some Nike Dunks. Yeah, well, they were the, the limited edition gunmetal ones. Yeah, which he was obsessed with at the beginning of the movie. And they're real beat up. They are. They don't look good. They look like they were colored with a Sharpie. Yes. Is that how those look? No. No, I didn't think so. I've had some Nike. Well, I've never seen the limited edition okay. gunmetal ones, but Nike Dunks are just like usually two colors. Yeah. I've had some Nike running shoes and they're always very clean looking. and Greg. like. I'm sorry. You've had Nike shoes, haven't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but like they always look very like clean looking. So he gets the shoes and the movie ends. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, but we do get one scene of Moose going to his like the dean or something and he's <gasps> right. getting he gets accepted to do a double major in engineering and dance. That was before the train station. Oh, that was yeah. So that's so what one of the days. things yeah, he yeah. was doing. Because I don't think the dean of NYU has like same day appointments. So Moose is now a dance engineering double major. He's a dance dance in the air. Dance in the air. That sounds magical. Moose is magical. And uh, the movie ends with him getting what he wants. Yeah, like it but was not somehow being able about to be him at some point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he should have been the lead. Yeah, his backup crew; those are enough dancers. We didn't need the two leads of this movie. All right, so what? What's your pitch for the next? So I think they're up to like seven in real life. I think so. So let's say we, you are put in charge of step up ten. Oh, okay. What's it going to be? I was going to say I was thinking we were pitching the fourth movie. Or oh, sure, you can. I'm gonna pitch Step Up Ten. Okay, I'm gonna pitch the fourth movie. Okay, so I think because we know Moose is in the fourth movie, I think that he is going to be at NYU, and it maybe maybe it's his senior year, and he's graduating, and he's struggled through the last four years of like dance and engineering and like trying to lead this wayward dance crew because now he's in charge because Luke went to California. Camille transferred to another school because she wants to be a doctor. I don't know. And she went to a med school. and Doctor of dance. Doctor of dance. And so he's all alone and he meets some girl from another dance crew and it's like a, like a Romeo and Juliet where you, you can't be with her because she's from another dance crew. Oh, she's a samurai or something. Yeah, she's she's from some other crew and it's frowned upon for him to date her and everyone's like, you can't, you can't fraternize with the enemy. And then there's another world jam and they form their own crew from people who are like loyal to them and they win. Oh. Yeah, I think that would be a really interesting movie. There's only one love story. They're going to be charming and fun. The end. I like it. What about you? What What is Step Up 10 going to look like? Step Up 10 is... um Called? I don't have a title yet. Maybe I'll get there by the end. Okay. Now. So it starts off, we have... Uh, it's like an underground dance contest. This is pre-credits, cold open. Okay. It's all dark and gritty, and um, it looks kind of like a fight club type thing. Mm -hmm. They're just pairs of dancers, and we have these, like, well, let's say they're 16. They're tw twins, brother and sister, and they're dancing, and they don't dance these other two people, and they win, and the people who got served, they're like, oh, like that. Okay. Do you know what I'm doing there? Oh. Yeah. They're, they're in pain. And then credits. And then we cut to a uh, middle-aged moose. Oh. He's an engineer now. Um, he's wearing a suit. He's like, he's tired. Is he like, he's, working. he's a serious engineer because he's trying to support his family? Yeah. 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 Okay. And also, um, there's no mother. He's a single father of those two twins. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are his kids now. So we have some like of their life and there's like a picture on the wall and you see that their mom was Camille. Mm -hmm. And you're like, where is she now? I don't know. What's she doing? Is she dancing? Who knows? And at night, he goes to say goodnight to his kids, and they're not there. 
And then he sees like their YouTube or something is open to him dancing. <gasps> and he's like, what? I tried so hard to keep them out of this part of my oh, life. He's like, I tried to change the world for them so that they could have like a normal life. Yeah, because he he hates dance now. Right. We don't know why. No. Nope. Not yet. So then he's in a panic. He leaves the house. And then we go to a different club and it's another like fight club dance thing. Now, though, the twins, they're getting served. Right. Hard. Not soft serve. Hard, hard scoops. Serve. Hard scoops. So many scoops. Team Heart Scoops is like just really giving it to him. And in this, we're going more like if you get danced at too hard, it's like you get beat up real bad. Mm -hmm. So he gets served so hard. He's like on the floor. Just like, uh, and his dad comes up to him and he goes, how did you find this? Like, I tried so hard to keep you this world away from you. And he's like, I learned it from you, dad. It's in our blood. I know the truth. But he, and then he like passes out. Right. And then he's in the hospital because hmm. he got served so hard. <laughs> he got served so hard. He's in the hospital now? <laughs> yeah. But then the daughter is going to go uh, avenge this vicious serving. So she's going to go get uh, revenge. Mm-hmm. But she goes missing. She never comes back. Because uh, I assume Moose will be like, no, don't do that. And then she sneaks out and she goes and we just don't hear from her. Ever again. Who knows? <gasps> we'll get that. So then the bulk of the movie is Moose realizing the only way he can get his daughter back is to battle dance everyone on the way to like find more information. Because he finds one person and he's like, I'm not telling you, man. What do you know? You're some fucking suit. And he goes, oh, I know some things. And then he breaks it out, right? Oh. And he goes, oh, shit. And then he, he defeats him in dance. He goes, okay, okay, I'll tell you. I don't know much. I work for for this crew. They, they're they the ones that put me up to it. I don't mm. really know. I'm like a first year at the Red Bucket School, whatever that school was called. <laughs> MSA. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> So then he's like, oh, okay, I need, I need to get the crew back together. And then he has like a montage of him going to all of the people like uh, Jenny, Kita, and all of, uh, Cable. Cable. Smiles. Hair. Hair. All of them. And he's like, and the, uh, some of them are like, man, I never thought I'd see you again. Yeah. In and that kind parts. of thing. And they each maybe will give a little bit of their backstory. Like mm -hmm. maybe some of them are successful dancers. And she's like, I don't do that kind of thing anymore. I'm choreographing for Britney Spears. So whoever's big at the time this movie's taking place. <laughs> right. And one of them's like, no, I haven't danced. Not since my knees gave out. And he's like, oh, it's all right. We got you robotic knees now. And then that guy's like a cyborg or something. Oh, know. yeah. Okay. All sorts of fun stuff like Robot that. legs. Yeah. Yeah. And then he'll be just called legs. <laughs> and then uh through all of that they're eventually gonna have to ask him like well what happened to you where where's camille and then we have to hear the story about how the two of them they went to like uh, some like an underground it's bigger than world jam because mm -hmm. world jam you know that's on the surface everyone right. knows about world jam yeah. they know the best dancers are underground mm -hmm. so they went to this uh tournament which is like pretty much let's say it's like mortal Kombat. it's on some island and it's mm. like it's intense it's right. intense dance and they weren't ready they thought they were <gasps> ready they weren't she got served so hard she died what camille died in dance battle <gasps> and, and after that he, never he swore again? he'd never dance again oh my god i'm so into this movie already <laughs> so then he has his crew and they're dancing for the first time they have their training montage of course mm -hmm. but then they have to like dance like up the ladder. Right. They're going into the same tournament that Camille died in. And they have to like beat all these different crews. And there's like different sizes of crews. And they're they're beating them all up. And then we get to the last little bit. And let's say like people from his crew have to break off because they're like, you go ahead. I'll get this guy. And then he's dancing at him. Mm -hmm. And then Moose just keeps running up and up. He gets to, like, the top floor of this giant warehouse. I picture it like Game of Death, that Bruce Lee movie that someone out there might know. Right. And he gets to the top, and then it's, like, all dark. There's just one kind of spotlight from on top, and you can't really see who is, who's there. Mm -hmm. Big, giant throne. And oh. in that throne, there's a guy. Baggiest fucking pants you've ever seen. Tank top, big fur coat, pro fit cap on backwards. Channing Tatum. Oh! He's like, it's full circle. He's the boss. He's the one that put out the hit on his kids. And he's like, why would you do this? You're their uncle. You were my hero. Yeah. How could you do this? And he's like, 
I am your hero. Look what you did to me. You, it's because of you, my sister's dead. Mm. And he's like, you took my family. Now I'm taking yours. Oh my God. And then he pulls off the coat, puts on a real big long sleeve shirt, and he's going to battle Moose. <gasps> and then it's the final battle. But Channing Tatum, he's fucking Channing Tatum. He's taking Moose. Right. Moose is like, oh, I can't take it much more. And then, I know um, his daughter is like locked in a cage, let's say. Okay, sure. I was going to ask if she was in a cage. Yeah, she's there. I thought, I assumed she'd be like in the foreground somewhere. Yeah. Like. yeah. But then um, his son, he's like come out of the coma in the <laughs> meantime. And he's like gotten there, lets the sister loose. And he's like, we have to do it for mom. And then the two twins, they come and they back up their dad and they defeat Channing Tatum. Whoa. And then they win. I like evil Channing Tatum in this movie. This Isn't that a good fun. movie? I fucking fun. love it now. No, I want to see that. Board. I want to see that so it's bad. It's like Mortal Kombat dance. Yeah. Oh, so it's step up, tan, Mortal Kombat. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of Mortal Kombat video game, a lot of uh, game of death, and a lot of step up. Yeah. And uh, some Rambo. Wow, let's make that movie. So I'm just saying out there, if you know who's making the step up movies, get me in. Yeah. I will write a spec script for you guys. I will write a script. I'm I'm all right. I've sold a few screenplays before. Get me in there. <laughs> and I will uh, be Dane's consultant. Yeah. Yeah. You can be in charge of the shirt lengths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Long enough for the women, skinny enough for the men. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the slogan for yeah. for a deodorant, I think. I think so. <laughs> so our second sponsor of the episode is Taproot Edmonton, who is on a mission to inform you about your city. So if you want to get a handle on Edmonton's growing innovation scene, you can take a listen to Bloom, Taproot's newest podcast. Each week, host Emily Rendell Watson and Faiza Ramji will discuss the latest developments in efforts to solve new problems and I di- and diversity in the economy. Find out who has invented what, who is investing in whom, and what is on the horizon. You can find it at bloom.taprootedmonton.ca. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. Any final thoughts, Samantha, on our third installment of the Step Up franchise? I'm highly enjoying this journey. Yeah. Is this the best one? So far, I think. I think three is the best one. I think... How would you rank them so far out uh, of these three? I think three, one, two. Oh, I'm three, two, one. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because two was sillier, and I think the sillier these movies get, the better they are. I thought it was silly in the wrong direction. So That's fair, true. I think three and one, because they were really like serious about it, and it kind of worked-ish. I wouldn't say three was serious about anything. No, I mean one. Oh. One was serious. Yes. Yeah. And they were, trying, they were trying something, because it wasn't a tested like formula yet. Well, except for all of those movies that have the exact same plot. Fair, but this is the beginning of the Step Up <laughs> franchise. Yeah, at this time period. So I think three, one, two. I'm going to go three, two, one so far. Okay. And I can only hope that we get to see another one. We'll see. But it won't be next week because next week we will come back for some spoiler-free reviews for our Things of the Week. And I'll let you know what we are watching for the big watch the week after that. And I did promise to go into more genre stuff. Mm -hmm. Because we haven't done, for my end at least, sci-fi or musicals, not even much horror. Yeah. Something like that is what, uh, that's my hint. That's not much of a hint. It's old in a genre. Okay. Not sure yet, but that's what it's going to be. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. So, what do you have next? 3D Slurpee kissing. Oh, that's right.